tip number three is using a tripod. And I see this all the time with videos is people handhold DSLRs and things like this, and they're using a, a lens and the whole time it's shaking. And I see this a lot with dance videos and I'm like, I get it. It's artistic. Ow. I know that you guys are just trying to get some movement in the camera completely, but you can buy, you know, inexpensive sliders, um, even like little grips, or even buy a camera that has an image stabilizing lens on it and throw this on and you'll notice that that will bring down that vibration a lot. Um, using tripods, I try and use tripods for all my headshots, especially if you're shooting telephoto because the telephoto senses vibration a little bit more than something like a wide angle lens would. Um, so use a tripod if you can. Invest in a good tripod. My tripod's uh, like a Manfrotto carbon fiber one. So definitely invest in a good tripod if you buy like one of those plastic ones from Target. Most of the time they can't really handle the weight of a, of a heavy DSLR, even like a Rebel. This is, this is a, a bigger one, but it can't handle the weight of a camera like that. And so you end up getting vibration in your shot anyway, which pretty much defeats the whole purpose of you putting a tripod. So if you're gonna get a tripod, put a little bit of money into it. They have ones that break down all the way and they're small enough to fit inside of a backpack. So you don't have to get like a massively big one, but take some time, look at, you know, better brands and understand what you're paying for. So using a tripod is tip number three. All right, so tip number four is uh, gonna be shooting in raw. Um, again, these tips are really more for the uh, photographer that's trying to take their, their stuff up to the next level. Um, Raw is basically like the full quality of your of your camera um, compressed when you do the images. Um, if you're shooting really fast, like even me, like for event photography and things like that, I might shoot at like a high JPEG quality, um, like the the L, the, which is basically the the next step down from from raw format. Um, if that's for like events where I'm like running and gunning and shooting like crazy. I might not shoot those at raw all the time. It just depends. But generally speaking, especially like any portrait session that I do, any dance photo or anything like that, I shoot all those in raw. And the reason for that is because I know for a fact that I'm going to want to add my tweak on it later. And what I mean by tweak is like part of my style is is shooting the the, the, the lighting and everything on location the way I see it and the other part of it is also processing it with my the ways that I process it so using Lightroom or Photoshop or whatever and so if you're gonna if you're gonna if you know that you're gonna go in later and add a few tweaks into it it's really recommended that you shoot in raw now I know it, it becomes very big files so it kind of becomes a headache to handle that um, but the results you get are just a lot better um, that's tip number four shooting in raw more of a recommendation than a tip, but uh, that's kind of what all this stuff is, so. Moving on. All right, so last but not least, moving your focus point. And this one is huge, all right? And this goes back to the aperture and things like that. I've seen people get like super bad, excuse my language, but they get super badass images, but my technical brain kicks in when I look at them, and it's like, let's say for example, it could be a guy with a hat on like this. And the hat's in focus, but their eyes are out of focus or their face is out of focus because they shot in such a low aperture. And plus they didn't know how to move their focus point in their camera, all right? So what you're looking at right now is basically what you see when you're inside the eye hole of a camera. It's basically the same thing. Um, it's gonna be different depending on what kind of camera you have. If you have a T2i, you're gonna have less of these little focus points. But basically what you're looking at is where you select that is where your camera is gonna try and focus on. So let's say you know that the eyeball of the person is you know, right up here in the top corner, move your focus point to that top corner and let the camera focus directly on that rather than like letting the camera just automatically focus on the image with, with all the focus points because it doesn't know. A lot of times it's gonna focus on whatever's closest to you. And if you're wearing a hat and you're shooting at a really low aperture and you only have this much focus distance and you're wearing a hat, and it focuses on the tip of your hat, your face is gonna be out of focus. It doesn't have enough room. Now, if you were to shoot that at f8, you're gonna get more stuff in focus. So you kind of see where a lot of this kind of plays together. But if you're really trying to shoot at those low apertures, this is absolute 
great idea for you guys to really start uh, using this effectively is to start using those focus points on the back of your camera. Um, for Canon, I know it's always like somewhere on the top corner like this, and then you hit it and then you can kind of move it around with, uh, you know, whether it's this dial or I have like a little like nipple guy here. Um, and you can basically move it around and find like where you're trying to put the, the focus or the attention on, let the focus point do that and then take the picture. Now, sometimes it's not gonna be exact, um, cause it doesn't go, you know, the focus points don't always go to the end of the camera and back depending on how you're trying to compose your shot, but that'll get you a lot closer to having a, um, correctly focused image, um, at the end. So that's tip number five is use those focus points in your camera to focus on the thing that you're actually trying to get in focus. I've said focus a lot. So that's it, uh, five tips to hopefully uh, make you guys better photographers on the technical side. Uh, if you guys like the video uh, and you guys want me to keep posting them on this channel, feel free to throw in a comment. Um, if you guys uh, don't comment, then I'll assume you guys like it on the other channel, so I'll keep posting content there as well. And if you guys wanna see it there, head over to that channel and subscribe, that's Random Vision HD YouTube channel. And uh, if you guys wanna check out my most recent video on that channel for uh, photography was this uh, photo shoot I did for Ricky Freak Sinatra while he was painting. You guys know him from Knucklehead Zoo and from uh, Jabberwocky Show and all that kind of stuff. He's an awesome b-boy, really good friend of mine. Um, also, if you guys haven't checked it out, my last dance video, Can't Feel My Face, uh, weekend cover violin version by Peter Lee Johnson. Check that out on this channel. And thank you guys very much for watching. We'll see you guys later on. Have a great weekend. Peace.